Welcome. We are so excited to have you back for the third episode of the Off Meta Podcast. I'm Ganesh from Deck Check. And I'm Samurai Dancer. Today we're hanging out with a dynamic duo with a good set of eyes between them. Welcome to Off Meta, where the brews that are hot shoot their shot. In this show, we focus on the fascinating Off Meta CDH decks that people haven't seen yet, like the wonderful Borberegmos and Thibblethip. We'll have a fresh new episode every Friday by 6 p.m. Central Time. Off Meta is not responsible for the tournament results of decks and cards mentioned on Off Meta. If you'd like to be featured on Off Meta, go ahead and reach out to us on our Discord. Coming up on the Off Meta podcast. Yeah, this, is, this is really like just a zoo, man. Like there's there's Cyclops, Homunculus, we got a Goblin Pirates, Shapeshifter Rebels, <laughs> Halflings, like Kraken Horrors, Elder Dinosaurs, <laughs> Dragon Wizards. Like whatever. I counted, I counted three humans in the deck. <laughs> those are, is there those anything are those you don't have? Yes. So before we jump into Borberigmos, uh, every podcast we're going to have a quick section for off meta news, where we share with you off meta decks that have performed well in the past couple of weeks. So first up, we have Unctus, the Grand Metatect. So this this very nerdy nerd man <laughs> is uh, is a mono blue turbo deck. So it seeks to quickly resolve Unctus and an Untapper, and then it wants to loot through its entire deck until it ends up with Thassa's Oracle and Counterspell Backup. Notably, it runs cards like Gush and Daze which is a very good indication this deck is not staying for the long game at all. So on the rise, we have Elsha the Infinite. This legendary Dijin monk costs two in Jeskai for a 3-3 with prowess. That means it gets plus one, plus one whenever you cast a non-creature spell. You may also look at the top card of your library at any time. Very banal, very boring effects. Also, you can cast non-creature spells from the top of your library anytime you could play an instant. This genie has been in the bottle for over 10,000 years, and it's looking to come out and grant some wishes. The standard build looks to be down to just five creatures, and then one more with this commander. Looking to go heavy onto enchantments with ancestral knowledge, and using Shurikai to generate blockers. Truly, we are looking for some wishes. Oh yeah. Next up, we have a very interesting one. Uh, Zergo and Ojitai, which is uh, a... Five mana, so two, and it's in Jeskai, so blue, red, white. Legendary creature, Orc Dragon. It's got Flying in Haste, and it has Hexproof as long as it ETB'd this turn. And it has whenever one or more dragons you control deal combat damage to a player or battle. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. You may return one of those dragons to its owner's hand. So... According to the description of this deck, it is a Jeskai midrange deck looking to overwhelm the opponents with value and finish the game with one of several combos. So, of course, uh, being a Jeskai deck, we're going to have the very, very uh, classic Underworld Breach, uh, as well as a few other combos here. We've got the Displacer Kitten, uh, we've got Thassa's Oracle, uh, we've got the Baron Master Wizard Dockside Extortionist line, uh, and to fairy kit. So a few different interesting things this deck actually does. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to do an episode on this commander, uh, because I'm very interested and would love to have this person come on the show and talk about it. Well, while we're talking about your dragons, let me tell you about my new dragon deck, Rowan Scion of War. This commander ah. looks to take four care of the, the game with one Colas and Rakdos. It has because you know you're definitely going to be attacking with this. And tap spells you cast this turn that are black and are red cost X less, where X is the amount of life you've lost. It's a 4-2. Legendary Human Wizard, those are great types and great stats. But you know what makes this deck really good? Dragon Storm. That's right, this deck is looking to power out with Storm. Getting out Goldspan Dragon, Terror of the Peaks, Null Spine Dragon, and Hoarding Broodlord, and maybe even a Cavern Horn Dragon. This deck is looking to utilize not once, not twice, but three times the cards that other decks do. Now, finishers, of course, it's got Ancestral. 
recall and the fact that it has in its deck the most powerful of powerful Bergy. Now, you may think that's not a finisher, but when you have Searing Touch and a cost reduction, one damage stacks up so fast, it's ridiculous. Nah, what makes this deck amazing, though, is the new inclusion from the Doctor set of Return to the Past with four and two reds. It gives all your instants and sorceries flashback on your turn equivalent to their converted mana cost. Meaning that if you cast an instant or sorcery from your hand, you can then flash it back from the grave. And with Rowan, the cost reduction will make your rituals basically free. This deck okay. is powerful, this deck mm -hmm. is fast, and this deck is a threat. Keep an eye out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, very scary. Um, last up, we'd like to just kind of mention uh, Atali has definitely been on the rise. Uh, and it's so much on the rise that I don't think we can really consider this off meta anymore. Uh, this list is a friend of mine and he definitely beat the heck out of me at one of the tournaments I was at recently. So yes, <laughs> definitely been doing very good. All right. I, so if I gotta like... admit green dino pretty good. Yeah, it is. It is really good actually for some reason. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to hear more about any of these decks, please let us know in the comments and uh, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode coming in one week. Also, again, if you have a spicy deck and you'd like to appear on the show, just let us know in the Discord linked below. Let's get started with Borborygmos. All right, we are here with Aiden, the creator of Borborygmos and Fibbletip. Uh, a list that recently got a top 16, yes, with your friend. Uh, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to confirm. Yeah, it's actually gotten two now. It got one in Virginia, one in two. Uh, like Chapel Hill. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you came up with the deck, how long you've been playing CDH, and, uh, yeah, why, yeah. Why this deck? Uh, well, I started playing Magic around the release of like Dominaria, Guilds of Ravnica. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a little bit after that, I started playing Commander. And only more recently have I gotten into CEDH just because like we have a local community that's starting to grow. Um, and of course, I started by consuming a bunch of content for it on YouTube because no one wanted to play it yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... I ended up seeing this on, I want to say playing with power first was a Borberg Mess and Fibble Thip list. And I thought it looks good, but I think there's a better way to do it. And that's just by jamming a bunch of creature tutors into it. <laughs> so I tried that <laughs> and turns out it works pretty well. <laughs> okay. So yeah, how long have you been playing the game and uh, what got you into magic and then CDH in general? Um, I, yeah, I started playing, again, around the Dominaria, like, original, like, the 20, what would that have been, 2016 or something? Yeah, maybe? yeah. Uh, and I actually came from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! to playing Magic, mm. because everybody wanted to play Magic instead of playing the terrible game that Yu-Gi-Oh! became, in our opinion. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, just kind of following my friends who I played games with in school. And we just ended up moving towards magic and haven't gone anywhere else since. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, cool. Very cool. You got anything for him, Samurai? Yeah. So, like, what's your, like, tournament experience so far? Like, what have you played in? Uh, tournament experience has not been, um, like, for CDH has not been a lot. I played in a few RCQs first to, like, like in uh, Pioneer and Modern just to, like, start playing in that competitive mindset. Mm -hmm. And then more recently, uh, once competitive events started popping up around my area, I started moving to that because I just like the play style of four player over 1v1 more. Right. So I've shifted more to CEDH as my primary competitive format. So I played in two actual tournaments, all in person. I haven't done any online tournaments at all. Mm -hmm. Um one at the Gathering Place and one at GalaxyCon in Vir in Virginia uh, for a full set of duels um, oh. prize, and that's about it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, very cool. 
Uh, so yeah, let's move on to why play this deck. So I guess we should really quickly explain <clears throat> what this card actually is, what it does. Uh, so this was from, what set was this? Was this Dominaria? It was the one with the this combination. This was, uh, no, no, this this was uh, uh, War, the Phyrexian um, invasion. This was uh, March of the Machine that brought. March of the Machine. Uh, yeah. yeah, so there's a bunch of combination it. commanders in that set. Warbergmos and Thibble Death being one of them. So it's a five mana in Teamer, so two mana and a green, blue, red. Legendary creature Cyclops Homunculus. And whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you draw a card, then you can discard any number of land cards. When you discard one or more cards this way, uh, Borborygmos and Fibbletip deals twice that much damage to target creature. Uh, and then you can pay one in a blue, and you can put it into its owner's library third from the top. So yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, why play this deck? So I think you play this deck if um, what you want to do in a game is just play win attempt after win attempt after win attempt, <laughs> uh, all backed by just a solid value engine on a commander. Like, mm -hmm. like the value engine, it doesn't seem like that much. But then you actually play with it. And this thing does so much in the command zone. Um, it's just a... It's a teamer pile backed up by a solid commander, and you just jam wins over and over and over. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah. Um. I see. So you he's gonna draw you one on ETB, and then he's gonna draw you one when he attacks. Um. But it kind of doubles. Um. In that it's also removal, so you're also taking things off the board at the same time, right? Yeah, the the removal. It's also why there's a slightly heightened land count from normal mm -hmm. um, decks, just because land is lands are also just like shocks at worst. Sometimes just a little bit higher to get those high priority target creatures, but the removal on him is very strong. What it's are you like running like twenty eight, twenty nine? Uh, we're on. It's on thirty at the moment. Which is crazy. It's it's like, like uh, <laughs> that's, that's like a third of the deck, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. So well, I guess we do it. touched on this like a tiny bit, but like, what are the strengths? So like, besides like, yeah. So we got our value engine here. We're able to consistently put out win attempts every turn. Um, what other strengths would you say maybe this deck has? Uh, I think a major strength is its adaptability. Um, mm -hmm. It can play around uh, certain stacks pieces very well by just shifting its focus to something else rather than having to remove that stacks piece necessarily to continue your plan. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of situations so it's good where... good on the pivot. Yeah, it's very good on the pivot. You can just completely shift to another thing if one thing is shut off completely. Hmm. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, like, that... what are the combo wins? Um, yeah. <laughs> the combo wins uh go from dockside regular dockside loops. Um, that you would me expect. shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Who could have guessed? Red and green in the deck, and it uses dockside loops. No way. Uh, <laughs> Must be new idea. <laughs> uh, also, keep keeping with the originality. We've got food chain. <laughs> keeping, <laughs> we got food chain. I... Squee. I, I am shocked. <laughs> uh, again, it's all all the these original ideas with Holebreaker Horror as well. <laughs> Just <laughs> keeping it real like, original. What combos <laughs> are in Tamir. Well, we got Food Chain, so click. We got Darkside. Uh, Holebreaker is a blue <laughs> card, so should we run that as well? Wow, you know what's also in the? You know what? How about a Niv Mizzet with a Tam yeah, lookout? Yeah. No, no, we'll see that coming. Yeah, throw in Niv Mizzet and Tandem lookout, and then if you are extremely like if you are down to your last option you also have the fun combination of atali and displacer kitten mm -hmm. which, oh god while not necessarily yeah. infinite it's probably infinite it's basically <laughs> infinite yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. it's very non-deterministic deterministic uh yeah, it's like a it, git rock you know a git rock can fizzle it can <laughs> Like, is it going to, or are we just going to spend 30 minutes waiting for it to? And it's... then I, I can't help but notice you were like, oh, you know what, Blue, my commander draws cards. 
Tasas? Tasas. <laughs> yeah, Tasas. Just, just to have it. Just, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I love how you're like, man, like, I got like 10 slots. What should I put in here? Uh, let's... Tamir, uh, what is this? Tamir combo pieces. This sort of works. This kind of this will. This is fine. This work. <laughs> Just throw it in there. Look, I I think I see like uh, you got like the kitchen sink in here too. Like you got a uh, oh yeah pot as well. <laughs> like you go up, you sacrifice. I see the chains. I see the loops, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot of just these are the good cards in these colors. And turns out if you only have half the combo, one half of that combo is usually a pretty strong card individually. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like Tandem Lookout, man, like is pretty decent actually at just drawing you cards. Yeah. Uh, Niv Mizzet, pretty good at drawing you cards. Uh, Consecrated Sphinx, pretty good at drawing you cards. Itali, pretty good at drawing, well... Not really, but pretty good at playing your opponent's cards. Hallbreaker Horror, I don't think that's... That's just a combo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're using that for anything but a combo, I think you're in a pretty rough spot. I think, yeah. <laughs> things have gone very badly. <laughs> Horribly. Okay, so, yeah, it seems like the combos in this deck are... Semi-straightforward, like... Um, are there any, like... Um, do you go up the chain at all with Birthing Pod, or is it really just you kind of pod Borborygmos into, uh, let's see, like a Sphinx or a Dead Eye Navigator or a yeah. Mizzet, basically? Typically speaking, it is uh, just use pod or pod effects on Borborygmos and Fibblethip. Mm -hmm. But there's also cases where you can do other things. Like if you just have a Squee in your hand, like you can just play it. Sack it to that to get your Timber Sabretooth or even a Clever Impersonator if there's just a particularly strong thing on the board that you want. Ah, gets like, your cat. Uh, there's, yeah, it gets, it gets cat. Get, um, which is going to blink it, so then you can sack Borborygmos to it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so there's, cool. there's plenty of, like, this card has stopped being useful to me. Let me go get a different card now. <laughs> We're done with you. Let's let's go to the next part of this. Yeah, you can put your <laughs> yeah. Imperial Recruiter, you sack it, and then you just grab something that's way better. Like Imperial Recruiter can go grab Dockside, and then uh, Kitten, you just turn the Recruiter into a Kitten, and then you're just off to the races. Yeah, mm -hmm. or you can even just, if you still have the Team or Sabretooth, you can just get the combo. Just yeah. like right there. Yeah, you can actually. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a lot of the reason that Birthing Pod is in the deck. It's less for like the traditional pod lines mm -hmm. and more just like having a Birthing Pod every turn is pretty good. <laughs> like, yeah. Just being able to get one of the powerful cards is good enough. Yeah, it looks deck... like you realized the you didn't fall into the common trap of uh, Tamir and say like, oh, Kiki Jiki is kind of goaded it's like no 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 that's a trap you got to run two bad cards in addition to the kiki jiki yeah that's yeah, true I, I, I wanted to run as little bad cards as possible that was the objective <laughs> which one of these combos pieces is amazing by itself <laughs> yeah and that's that's that was kind of the idea like if the worst card in your deck is like squee or drift of phantasms i think i'm happy like <laughs> yeah that makes a lot of sense okay well, yeah, so what is your general strategy, like your game plan overall? Like maybe not, let's not get into early mid game and all that right the second, but like overall, is it really just, you just jam wins? Actually, I have a question before we get into that. Yeah. Oh, what turn is your late game here, Aiden? <laughs> what turn is my late game? Um, Probably around like turn... Like if we're getting past turn five, it's it's kind of a surprise. <laughs> Just, uh, it's yeah, I was it's like, kind of, it's the way I describe it is the the game plan is to have a turbo like play pattern just in the middle of the game instead of right at the start. Okay, like you you use the early game to set up resources and then you use those resources to just go and you don't stop. <laughs> you just never stop. That makes a lot of sense. So it's like kind of like rog side, but a turn later, like two turns Pretty later much. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's a more stable, less uh, feast or famine rog side from what I can see, because you're, 
you're using you're like i'm gonna get an advantage engine on board because unlike other people who are going to use that advantage engine to build up protection for the win i'm just going to build up multiple wins yes uh one of my favorite moments with this deck was uh in a game in one turn it attempted to win i believe five times did you get there with five different lines did you get there with that um i think it was extremely close but there was a niv mizzet there and oh. the niv mizzet managed to fight it off but it was an unbelievable turn that i still don't understand how it happened <laughs> that's fun um okay so yeah uh so we got that so yeah what are you how are you functioning in the early game um in the early game it's pretty much establish a value engine a normal thing like a ristic study a mystic remora uh get a one ring on the board set up your mana rocks whatnot um if you can get a vexing shusher there or sylvan safekeeper something to like actually protect your win when you go for it you get those out there mm -hmm. <laughs> not necessary but nice to have <laughs> i see okay so mid game like what makes you decide this is the mid game for you like uh like what the mid the mid game is the moment that you can try to get combo pieces into your hand like you have you have your value engines on board now you can use your mana to start setting up pieces in your hand to go for it that's when you're like turning to the mid game okay so early game you get cards mid game you get mana and turn those that mana into specific cards yes that's, and then that's late game starting. it looks then like late, late game, game you're like a rock in free fall yeah it's it's whatever it's what comes to you it's what's it's what's best in the moment you just go for like you go for Niv Mizzet lines, you go for Atali lines, you go for whatever. Just whatever is ready. <laughs> oh, okay. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, just... like... <laughs> uh, a question. If I was going to pick up this deck, what's some advice you'd give me? Some like common pitfalls, some little, uh, I wouldn't say F ups, but some stuff that maybe you did at the beginning that you're like, oh, no, that doesn't work like that. I would say um, a major thing is just making sure that you are very familiar with the list. Like, it's a lot of very powerful cards that a lot of people know, but it's making sure you know what cards are there, what cards aren't, and what cards are good on the current board. Like, you just, you need to be able to assess what will work here and what won't. Like, if you have um, something stopping, like, creature activated abilities. Uh, it's actually very important for Borbergmus and Fibblethip because that activate ability on him is used for your infinite mana loops to put him back in the command zone to have infinite draw. Oh. So if you can't activate that, you need to shift to something that can play through that. Um, Interesting. So that would swap over to Food Chain or Niv Mizzet lines or a Hallbreaker line, I guess. Yeah, something, something that will allow you to play through that particular stacks piece. Um, basically you're no longer on the dock side to your saber tooth loop you're on the i need stuff that just when it hits it's gone after yeah it. like um and then just a personal thing uh when you have tandem lookout in your deck make sure you know how soul bond works <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have made the error of having a soul bonded tandem lookout and trying to soul bond it and yeah. That was an embarrassing judge call. <laughs> that was... Been ah. there, done that. Everybody's yeah. play. I I played with Tandem Lookout for like, like somewhere close to like ten years. Uh, let me tell you, you're gonna make that mistake no matter how much you've played with it. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna happen, man. You're gonna be like, you're gonna get that long game where you're like, your brain's fried, and you're like, oh, I'll just play Niv Mizzet. It'll pair it up. We're fine. It's like nope, and it sure it sure will not. Sure. <laughs> it, sure, it sure did not. <laughs> it did not do that. Yes, it. <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> so, in your list, are there any cards that like you feel are being a little slept on, 
um, any cards you felt might be a little overlooked or like you started playing and then you like you had really good success with like I do see like there's a life from the loam here so yeah just tell us about some of these cards oh, yeah. here life from the loam is probably the weirdest card in the list because sometimes it can be a little bit um it's the only card that can feel awkward at times but when you need removal and you can essentially put six damage into your hand <laughs> that can kill pretty much anything so mm -hmm. just having it as a way to kill whatever is in your way is just really powerful um I've noticed Manglehorn getting played a lot more. I would have said that that's probably the biggest sleeper card in this deck because Manglehorn is absurdly strong, yeah. <laughs> especially in the current meta full of Docksides and whatnot. Like, just slowing those lines down is so important. Um, I would say the one thing that I find to be majorly overlooked is more relating to cards like Birthing Pod, where... I find that people get caught up in the fact that a card is supposed to win the game by itself mm -hmm. instead of assessing the card for its individual value. Like a card, a card like birthing pod, some people would say, oh, you're supposed to go up the pod line every time and you're just supposed to win the game right there, which you could do, but you don't need to. And it's probably better not to in this particular format. And sometimes I think people get caught up in those um, in those traps. Yeah, that lit, that old thinking of I if if I have birthing pod, I need to run something that untaps it so I can keep going up. And it's like, yeah, but those those are bad cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just go get yourself a good card and be done with it. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like guess what? This deck is all about advantage engines. And using like, those to make it so you can put so many wins on the stack. So you don't have to immediately win. You just have to make it so your opponent can't. Yeah. And especially especially in Commander, where you have a creature in your hand at all times with a specified mana value, you can just put whatever's best for you to tutor for from your Commander just to get that additional value. Like, that was the first thing... Uh, we did while building this deck was we went okay in these colors what six cmc creatures are there what? <laughs> like what's good to pull into play what's what's not and um, that that's kind of how we started <laughs> all right so you hate to see this you hate to ask us how do you crack this deck like open like what's the what are the cards that you just go like okay so like Next round, we'll probably win. <laughs> so, or, okay, so, like, what time is the clock at? Because, like, we're not what, winning much, this. What, what are we playing for now? Um, yeah. I would say the single, like, silver bullet card to this deck is Torpor Orb. Dude, the <laughs> oh, deck no, like, I'm not not gonna, yeah. <laughs> this... I'm, like, looking at it now, I'm, like, wait, oh, Hushwing Griff, that new gargoyle or whatever. Yeah, they're all bad things. <laughs> this none of these are good for you. <laughs> no, the the stopping ETBs is so hard to win through with this deck. Um, this deck also looks like it has an issue with uh, obviously. I would say Dranith, but you know what commander deck doesn't? But I would say yeah. like uh, Stony Silence effects looks pretty rough for you, uh, and so does uh, not being able to have activated abilities. Yeah, not having activated abilities. Um, also, like, Graph Digger's Cage, where you just, like, can't pull from yeah. the deck is also tough. Um, especially you can't since... pull from the deck, and it's not a creature, so you can't shoot it. Yeah, especially since uh, we actually ended up not running a Worldly Tutor in this build. Um, so you can't really tutor the pieces to hand. But I think, I think there's ways you can play around it that make it work. Um... I just worldly tutor just didn't feel good enough in this deck, which sounds weird to say. You're not like you're not like the deck that needs one individual creature. You're a deck that needs multiple creatures. So like running worldly tutor feels bad. Why not run something that puts it on the field? Whereas yeah. other decks are like they're on that Thassa's Oracle, so they really don't want that just slamming down onto the field immediately. They want to 
have that in hand or they want like a stacks piece you're like nah dude like i'm looking for a niv mizzet or natali that's six mana by itself if i'm tutoring for that it better go onto the field yeah i better, yeah. I better be i better be putting that into play right now i'm not paying retail listen to me not paying retail on my creatures I do not pay full price. <laughs> Never. <laughs> uh, now, I'm going to say something. Uh, why play this over, like, Thras and Dargo? I think it's the thing of just being able to run, like, more generic cards. Like, you don't need to run as specific of pieces to work with those with your commanders. Um, and especially, like... This achieves, uh, it's in a much different way. But this also achieves the infinite mana outlet that Thrasios has, and I think it has better like sack to tutor targets than Dargo does because mm -hmm. you're not limited by how expensive it is. Like you can shoot towards that middle ground. Um, I think you can just do more with this commander than you can with Thrasios Dargo. Um. That yeah. makes a lot of sense, yeah, because uh, Thrasios and Dargos doesn't do anything to the board. Like, unless they wipe or cast a spell. Uh, this commander is just passively doing that throughout the game. Yeah, and that is the other thing, is just being able to kill stuff on attack is <laughs> so strong. Yeah. Like, yeah, if they put down, like, a Hushwing Griff or one of the creature torp orb orbs, um, for you, it's fine because you can just discard a couple lands or one and yeah. just keep going. Creature stacks are creature stacks are not that bad. It's when yeah. you have those artifact stacks pieces or enchantment stacks pieces; those can be a little bit um, a rough, crippling. <laughs> Especially because Megahorn doesn't get rid of Torpor. Or... <laughs> no, Megahorn does not get. You have one shot. You have like, well, I guess two. You have like, you have the channel Chain. channel land, uh, and you have you. force of bigger i guess you have all the, yeah the other bounce spells and yeah. also hit it so this is just trade binder team here you are like mm, what's stuck in my trade binder right now <laughs> <laughs> what, what do i what I do i have land around <laughs> uh, you ever you ever play like the moderate like the the standard where it was just like trade binder standard where it's like th there's what was it trade binder abzan where it's like what, what do i have in abzan colors <laughs> These that are all good, good right now. What do I got? <laughs> what, what, what do I got? <laughs> rhino? Yeah, Rhino. Rhino works. <laughs> what do I got? Displacer Kitten? Yeah. You, Tamir, I'm sure there'll be stuff I can flicker. Uh, Clever Impersonator? Yeah, you know what? People run better cards than me sometimes. I mean, I it, run pretty good cards, but Wish Claw's a thing. I think that doing that, like going through my trade binder, is literally how we decided to put Atali into this deck. <laughs> <laughs> it was, <laughs> that's literally at your why, why i realized i was like man he's got like a tolly niff visit i think dead eye navigator consecrate i think i've got these in my trade binder right now <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like i could probably put like most of this stuff together and just run it that's so funny that's literally trade binder for Rigmos. uh <laughs> I'm going to change the name in my, in my collection immediately. <laughs> right now, the list that I don't have updated is called Borbing Pod, but I'm going to change it to that. <laughs> it's called Borbing Pod. Well, I, I love the idea of Borborikmos, like a football thip, like just constantly getting lost, but has like a trade binder of cards being like... <laughs> Points to Barbara Rigmos. He's like, look what I got in my binder. <laughs> look, look what I got. <laughs> yeah, he's finding more more random stuff because he keeps getting lost. He can deck. find all these cards, but he can't find his way home. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he's going to be getting rid of that march for a new green, a uh, random green rare. By the way, I noticed most of your cards in here are rares, not mythic. So it does. It feels even more like trade binder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> it's like you got like one or two like you got like five or seven mythics but most of these are just rares so it's like yeah rares like, oh, yeah. commons <laughs> huh oh my god that, that is interesting <laughs> never really considered that all right All commons. So, yeah there's a lot of them <laughs> yeah there are 
let's go card by card. Uh, not every single card, but um, yeah, a few of these. Uh, let's talk about them a little bit. Um, so you are an Alistar Shepherd. I mean, that makes sense. You want to make your green spells uncounterable, just like everybody does. Yeah. Um, why Orcus Especially Lumberjack? He's stacking creatures. Orcus Lumberjack is honestly something I probably should have brought up when you said what cards are underrated. This card makes so much mana. <laughs> this card, it it just especially when you have life from the loam to recycle those forests ah. like just back into your hand put them back mm -hmm. in play or discard them to your commander if you need to 30 and lands like, yeah 30 lands <laughs> yavamaya um, yavamaya helps with that a lot oh um, yeah it just it it can push you over the edge to get some earlier wins uh earliest i've seen the deck win is on turn 2 <laughs> Wow. And that was because of an Orcish Lumberjack. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah, that uh, definitely makes sense, yeah. It's also why you're, you're able to run Sylvan Safekeeper, same concept. You're running more lands, you're running more value with life from the loam in them. Yeah, just take advantage of lands uh, in these simple ways. I wouldn't call it a full-on, like, lands deck, but it's it definitely takes advantage of that resource that most decks... It's honestly a weakness to be top decking lands a lot. It's just not in this deck. <laughs> Drift is Have for you food considered chain, obviously. like exploration or like any of those enchantments like burgeoning where it's one mana, but Burrow. you can play multiple lands like in a turn cycle. I actually I hadn't considered those. I, I'm not sure about burgeoning because burgeoning feels like one of those that has like a it has a kind of ceiling to it where like it just doesn't do as much but mm -hmm. exploration is definitely worth um if, if i may make a recommendation summer bloom summer bloom that card is that card summer is bloom. nutty summer bloom huh. this is something me and mons played around with when mons was first trying out his uh, mons loves team or land decks so that's why when i looked at your deck i, I can't help but smile because it reminds me of this paco halden lands deck that he used to build. Uh -huh. uh, and we were like joking, and we found Summer Bloom is nutty as heck when you're above like 28 lands. Uh, being able to do three land drops in a single turn. Especially since they are, they are land drops, so they're untapped. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that is definitely worth considering. That's. <laughs> You're giving me th something to think about with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it gets nutty so fast, uh, especially if you had like a random like thing, play a land from grave. So like you could do Ooh. city of traders over and over and over again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's another thing like worth considering is um, what's the what's the creature crucible worlds? Because I want the creature. I'm an excavator. But... Yeah. Ramen up. Ramen up. Ramen up. Excavator is also something I should about putting and then there's here. like green warden of muramasa doubles landfall triggers lets you play lands from graves but it's a big creature i think it's the six drop though so you know <laughs> Ooh, six drop i like oh, i like no. that number. <laughs> i was like i think it's a six drop though so it's kind of your like golden number <laughs> dude the looking at the mana curve of this deck is worthless <laughs> it tells you absolutely nothing it just <laughs> what is yeah, it i'm gonna like, take a look the average mana is uh, 1.66 with lands and 2.38 without lands yeah okay. total so mana value. That is, you gotta look at how many cards yeah. that he has over like mana value four uh a lot right what is it he's it's, got a little bit over 10 <laughs> a little bit over 10 permanent 10 spells that with mana value four or greater <laughs> yeah. which is kind of nutty uh, because most decks stop at about three to four of those. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, I'm nah, like, I can, I can go one more. Cause you know, <laughs> like obviously like the counter spells, like, you know, like everybody runs like force of will and mind break trap these days, but he's running force of vigor too. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's running birthing pod, the one ring. Uh, obviously his creature suite is like, uh, let's see. His creature suite alone is nine creatures over four mana. What? One, two, <laughs> four three. over. Seven, eight, and eight. yeah, that's crazy. I didn't really think about that too much. 
So it's like he it's really key though for him because uh he runs Eldritch Evolution. Yeah. So having those B4 drops turns them immediately into a six drop. Uh that's why it's like looking at your numbers. Uh it's pretty smart. Uh let me ask you, what made you decide clever impersonator over uh over some of the other options? Um it was one of those things where we found that in the first tournament uh, um, at the gathering place, we figured out clones are really strong in this deck, especially since you can tutor a lot of them straight to play mm -hmm. like from your one drops. Um, and since you're tutoring them straight to play, the mana value just isn't a big deal. Like you want something that's easier to tutor. And honestly, in this deck, it's way easier to tutor a four than it is a two. Yeah. So and and you're also just getting the ability to go like, oh, you have a Ristic study? So do I. Like <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I have one Ristic, but you know what? We haven't had second Ristic. Yeah, and God. there's also just the idea of getting a second birthing pod. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that can Welcome be to going up helpful. the birthing pod chain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who who needs to untap birthing pod when you can just have like more than one? <laughs> just have as many birthing pods as you need. <laughs> turns into smothering tithe. Turns into uh, another cradle if you need it. Hitting uh, hitting enchantments is uh, the big thing. Because I see yeah. you're not on cradle, but I I see it's because you're basically always sacking your dork, so you should have like a about three yeah. creatures at most. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where it is. Is you typically end up at like two to three and not really mm -hmm. over that. And also your creatures are pretty high priority targets for removal. So you yeah. end up with a dead Gaia's Cradle. It, it, we tried it with Gaia's Cradle first and it just ended up being a dead land a lot. That's what I figured. I was like yeah. looking at it. I was like, I was like, yeah, like I imagine like number one thing that people were like were, hey, like if I kill this creature, not only do I get rid of this Niv Mizzet, but I also get rid of a mana. Yeah. And <laughs> The last thing you need to do is incentivize people to destroy your creatures more. <laughs> the yeah. last. Like that that was already on the game plan for them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, we went through Lumberjack, Safekeeper, uh Flesh Duplicate, obviously clones are good. Thorkel, I'm assuming this is kind of a little bit of a meme and you just kinda of have it there to say I win the game when you <laughs> when well, you yeah, draw back. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like there, there are two ways to win when you draw your deck. One is by uh, looping uh, Endurance and Noxious Revival with niv -Mizzet in play. So you just loop your deck completely, and every time you draw, you just ping. Right. Um, or you can just Thassa's Oracle and make it really easy. <laughs> you, you don't okay. even have to loop it. You don't even have to use Noxious Revival with Endurance. You just put the Evoke... Oh, you put the evoke trigger first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just exile it. Boom. Goes. Yeah. Gets yeah. So back. You, you either endurance loop with Niv-Mizzet, or if Niv-Mizzet is gone, then you can just Thassa's Oracle. Like if someone exiles Niv-Mizzet, which is a popular thing to do. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder why. Man. I don't know. I don't know, man. He's just trying to help. He's just trying to be a really helpful guy. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Okay, so Thoracle, uh, maybe not super necessary, but uh, easy way to get the other players at the table to pick up their deck boxes and leave <laughs> so you can move yeah, on with your pretty life. pretty much. Yeah, okay. That's that makes sense. Okay. Fisher makes sense, to, uh, like another Shepherd, but kind of better because you can uh, do any spell. Yeah, Shusher, um is one of those cards we've put it in it hasn't really gotten its moment but i know that it will <laughs> like mm -hmm. it just it also just it has the um ability to go oh my opponent's trying to counter something that's going to win the game you can't counter his counter spell yeah yeah like, i'm gonna yeah. state this right now i would be off shusher really yeah uh that card gets more and more dead as we get more into this format Dosen. Dosen, oh my god. I have Too considered spicy. Dosen. I have I have considered Dosen. If you want me to go Especially because even, you are a Neoform Eldritch birthing pod deck, landing the Dosen after that is crippling. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, 
what are they going to do? They can't know that you're going for Dosen. You could be going for anything. <laughs> you could be, could be anything. Could be a boat. Yeah. It's Dosen. It oh, so we boat. lose this turn. <laughs> Dosen just I goes, guess. oh, so we lose this turn. Okay. I was curious what you were doing, but. <laughs> Good suggestion. Yeah. Uh, that, that was on the, that was on the list of cards that was in consideration. Dosen was definitely on that list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's so good. Uh, I'm partial to Teferi, Mage of Zalfir. Been loving the f*** out of that card. See, I didn't say the word this time, Ganesh. Okay. I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love that guy. Uh, he's a five drop. Uh, makes all your creatures have flash. Uh, human wizard with flash makes everybody else's stuff sorcery speed. Yeah. But uh, I think Dosen's more your your jam. It's a I green think, spell. Yeah, I, think, I think Dosen is right where it needs to be. Like the first thing I considered, uh, just because I have I I think in non-white green decks, I think City of Solitude is not being played nearly <laughs> enough. Uh, yes. What is that? that I, I know that uh three drop enchantment, green and two colorless, activated abilities and creature abil and spells cannot be cast or activated on other players' turns. Like sure. everything is sorcery speed, including mana abilities. You cannot do mm -hmm. anything on your opponent's None of it. Because it, it doesn't say except mana abilities. It says activated abilities cannot be done. I've never says, heard of that land? card. No. <laughs> what the hell? It was an old Get Rock tech. Like Get Rock loved that boy. Yeah, I. Oh God, was was this podcast a good idea? <laughs> We're bringing up ancient, ancient evils that should never see the light of day, right? Like, <laughs> but the only reason I could see it not being decent in your deck is just because it's an enchantment, something Timir already has Honorable. a hard time looking for. Yeah, yeah exactly. Three drop. Which you already, if you're looking for a three drop enchantment, we already know what you're looking for. Yeah, there's that, that's that very highly contested by one card. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's like, one very. Oh, it must be Rhystic study, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I really need that Rhystic. Um, Rhymes with uh, Bood Bane, perhaps. Okay. Dosen so, uh, yeah, tell us about this. I mean, Actually, we just discussed <laughs> why what we might get with Drift and Phantasms, so we don't really need to go over it. <laughs> Still rhymes yeah. with Boot Bay. <laughs> you're, you're getting you're getting either uh, either Food Chain or the card that wins with Food Chain. That's what yeah. you're getting. <laughs> you're getting yeah. Squee, you're getting Food Chain. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Endurance needs no. We already talked about how it uh, loops your graveyard, but also it's good against like Breach decks, Rogside yeah. Blue Farm. Uh, Anyone like the yes. creatures are pretty self-explanatory. The rest of these yeah. creatures are basically like staples. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's... Imperial recruiter's gonna grab your dockside or manglehorn or squee. No, yeah, I... Any squee too, yeah. yeah. Squee. yeah. Tandem can combos grab with... <laughs> they can grab Yeah, you can grab yeah. Tim too, yeah. Yeah. Grab <laughs> Phantasm. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> I okay. need my food chain. <laughs> We're going to Imperial Recruiter, into Drift, into Food Chain. It took a while. We got there. Yeah, and you can get the clones, too. So technically, I mean, if you have the mana, Imperial Recruiter into Clever Impersonator can copy literally any non-land permanent on the board. Don't, don't let people know how good Imperial Recruiter is. This is, this oh, is no. a key card they, in my they deck. They can't know. They can't they know can't the know. secret. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, static okay. this out. Let's go. <laughs> Tandem Nib visits a combo. Displacer can we all know how good that is. Got another clone in Metamorph. Teamer, Sabertooth combos with Dockside. But also this can sometimes be a value piece, right? Because you can flicker or like you can bounce your recruiter. Reset tandem. Yeah, you can you can uh bounce recruiter, you can bounce Manglehorn if there's a if there's an artifact that you want gone and not just like um slightly Tapped. dealt with, like like slowed down a little bit. Yeah, um, protect creatures. You can reset your flesh duplicate or whatever clone, like if you want to change uh, your target uh, and it's still yeah, a creature. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just fact, it, it has so many uses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and if there's a dock side on the board, this actually does go infinite with the not just your own dock side, but with the clone too, right? Yeah. With uh, yes, and that's that's another reason that I'm not on um, phantasmal image. 
because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I want to be able to loop a clone if at all possible. And in this deck, it's like you can do it with Dead Eye Navigator, but mm-hmm. not being able to do it with Tamer Sabretooth is um, kind of yeah, a big. Can. You can with Sabretooth. I don't think it targets unless this is it doesn't, eroded. Does it not? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, that's no, right. Target. That's right. No, I but I think get... you're Phantasmal, I liked your logic on it, man. No, I think like, you're correct. Also, yeah. the worst thing that for you to do is try to do that loop with Phantasmal and then kill it. Yeah. <laughs> like someone like <laughs> targets it with anything. Well, actually, yeah. uh, you can activate Team or Sabretooth's uh, ability in response to the sack trigger. Mm-hmm. And still but then you're go off. Four mana. Yeah, you then you're, then you're even more mana. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. This is now we're paying secondary tax. market prices. Now we're now right. we're, we're past retail. double tax. We don't pay. We don't pay our taxes with this deck. It seems like also we don't pay full price, and we're tax evaders because we're jamming wins. <laughs> this is a wholesale deck. That's why it's trade binder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're doing okay. buy list prices on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Best I can do is thirty percent of TCG low. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best it, I got. It looks like there's a there's a small like little white mark on the top. But it looks like maybe. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll that's, take that's definitely off. HP never, damaged. Right there. This deck has never seen a near mint card in its life. There's no <laughs> such thing. Yeah, everything at <laughs> minimum has a binder dent or two, binder ding. <laughs> Good old three hole punch. Okay. Anyway. Uh, uh, so Sphinx, very good card. Dead Eye Navigator, combo engine. Niv Mizzet, uh, draw engine and combo engine. Atali, great. I'm just I'm just shotgunning through <laughs> these real quick. Uh, Hullbreaker, amazing. Finale, we all know why that's good. Infinite Mana Outlet and uh, Tutor also. We talked about Life from the Loam already. Uh, Neoform and EE do the same thing. We talked about cheating creatures in already uh what about transfig artifact we haven't actually gotten to this yet so i know there's birthing pod but like and the uh, ring maybe but yeah what else you have named the two cards that you are getting with transmute artifact. <laughs> <laughs> you can All also right, get metamorph metamorph if metamorph there we go. Is that's right. the other one okay yeah. okay okay in, hey, cool in a okay good spot you're you're getting one of three cards. You're not right. <laughs> doing anything crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I see in this deck you run Grim Monolith, so that you're gonna have tap stuff. <laughs> yeah, you, you, there's there's you always something. You got stigmas. You got stones. Like you've got the two drop well, rocks. So like, yeah. unlike other decks, you can actually get a fairly good discount on these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't a going to- retail. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know, I guess uh, for the listeners, what Transmute Artifact does is is a two mana sorcery. It is reserved list, right? Yes. Or, yeah. 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 Um, you sacrifice an artifact uh, once it, on resolution. It's kind of weird. So you, once it resolves, you sack an artifact, uh, and then you can search your library for any artifact and just put it into play. Um, but then you have to pay the uh, addition, the difference, difference in cost between the two. So if you sack a two drop rock and you're wanting the one ring, you're going to have to pay two blue for the transmute artifact. And then once the one ring enters, you're going to have to pay another two mana if you want to keep it around. Uh, but also, anyway, I'd like to state something. This turns your yeah. one ring into a birthing pod for only two blue mana. Yes. Uh, it can, it can turn your, uh, your tar- one of your targets into a different target. If that target has now become better, it, it essentially mm-hmm. functions as a mini version of all the creature tutors. Like it's it's like it's just a birthing pod for your artifacts. It's yeah. Also, I'm gonna state something so you guys don't get got like I got. Please remember if the artifact you're gonna sack when you play transmute artifact, if you cannot tap that for mana once it has resolved. Oh. So you better tap it. You no, can you- pay you can pay other costs after the other artifact comes out, but if you, the artifact you're sacking, you gotta tap it. Before this resolves. Before it resolves yeah. in resolution. Okay. Because w- once resolution starts happening, that gets sacked. You can't pay at that point. Yeah, you you <laughs> cannot do anything with it once it's resolving. You are sacrificing it. It's <laughs> yeah. So tap it before it. It's float like what's the worst thing that happens? Float. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Float mana first. Don't get got. Yeah. So like, the- as far as instants go, man. Like yeah. Muddle. That's the real question here. What are you transmuting for normally? Dockside. Uh, Dockside, um, you also have, uh, Survival of the Fittest is another option. Oh. I don't really talk about it much. Um, 
but that's oh. one of them. Life from the Loam is another good target. Neo form. There we go. Uh, uh, finale and Invasion of Ikoria, both uh, two CMC. Um, yeah. Transmute. You can transmute for transmute. <laughs> yep, you can transmute for transmute. <laughs> the Muddle the Mixture can just hit so many things. <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> yeah. Very flexible. Uh, obviously, you're on Force of Vigor. Why Force of Vigor over some other options? Um, I think it's just the fact that it's... I think it's the fact that on the turn before you go, it's just free. I think you're typically only needing... In this deck in particular, you're only needing to hit usually two things. Like, you're never trying to hit, like... I guess you're not trying to hit things immediately. You're trying to hit them like when you're about to go. So just being able to go, these are the two things that are stopping me and not having to go like one at a time, like, and just being free, just being free is good. Yeah. We saw this also, card uh, when we were talking about Frank Thrasios a while ago uh, mm -hmm. with Temujin, and he was talking about how much he liked Force of Vigor because uh, like if someone gets out like an early Ristic or Mystic or like there's two or three of them on the board, like you just kind of reset everything back to zero. Yeah. If, if two players are getting like super ahead, like it, it tends to do. <laughs> yeah. Being able to bring them back down just right. for one card or two, if you're, if you're, since you're pitching, but. So one instant, one very interesting instant that I did not see in your list um, was final fortune. Have you considered that card at all? Uh, Final Fortune is a card that I am very weird about um, mm -hmm. <laughs> for me personally. And it's yeah. because I have some of the worst luck ever <laughs> like of okay. any human being. Uh, <laughs> I'd also like to state you're not a Breach deck, so Final Fortune yeah. doesn't feel as good if you're not on Breach, in all honesty. Yeah, True. it's... It, it just there's a lot of points of interaction and having someone because what what happens a lot of the time is you try to win in a turn and someone stops you and then you just go again the next turn you could theoretically go like on a final fortune turn but i think there's too many ways for people to interact with your wins that it's just too risky i think your quality of creatures alone means that you don't need to take that risky extra turn uh, yeah. Whereas, like, obviously, like, Blue Farm, the creatures are kind of small. Yeah, yes. Uh, and, like, say, like, you're playing, like, my deck, like, Malcolm Caddis. I run it because, like, a lot of times I know that as the game progresses, my quality of creature is not going to be as good. I'm not going to be able to do this big, grindy game. Uh, so I want to just basically end it again. But for you, a lot of your stuff just like you say, like turn five's your late game, but a lot of your stuff just just gets better and better the more you can hard cast it. Yeah, and I, that's like the ideal is turn five is late game, and that's how mm -hmm. it tends to go a lot of the time. But if you're playing against like some hard stacks, like just hard casting a nim visit <laughs> like later on, will typically get you a tally. Yeah, just play an Atali. Even like I've I've said this when we put it in. I said, okay, we have a new plan F. Flip Atali. <laughs> we have a new like that's that's the final final plan. <laughs> if everything else has failed. <laughs> well, I guess there's a plan G where you're just beating people with with the Barbaric Mess and Fibble Pip and killing their blockers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like why why. The whole reason that you're not playing Dargo Thrasios is this is a more stable deck that's more about securing the win through advantage, resource yeah. acquisition, and then having an overwhelming amount of win attempts. Yes, that that is that is the idea, is just having a deck that can just keep going. It doesn't... If you stop a win attempt, that is not it. It is not over. <laughs> it is... <laughs> It can keep pushing. Yeah, they're like your punishment. Oh, like, okay, there's no way he can do it again. And then you do it again. And then the next turn, they're like, okay, there's no way he can do it again. And then you do it again. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the times, this deck wins on the third try. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
that tracks. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, um, a game I played just a few days ago, uh, I tried to win with a dockside loop. Someone exiled mm-hmm. my dockside with uh, uh, swords or something. Yeah. Uh, then I tried to use my Imperial Recruiter to go get Drift of Phantasms and Squee. Someone exiled my Imperial Recruiter in response with a Solitude. Uh, and then I just ended up draw- using a Rhystic Study. I just drew into the food chain stuff. <laughs> on the next turn nice. <laughs> like, yeah it just looks like your deck is just it's meant to be turbo but because it's a land based deck the grind is actually in your favor you, and because most of your stuff is creatures and most of it are not one and two drops they are big boys Yeah, uh, it looks like you basically do avoid like the Talion problem or the Tivit problem where it's like Oh yeah, like they are. They are. The longer the game goes, they're gonna get me. No, it's like the longer the game goes, the more securely I feel about winning. Uh, because now they're playing my game. But yeah. obviously, you do want to just put in win attempt, win attempt, win attempt, and just push through their resources. Because you yeah. are not on enough counter spells to be police, and that oh, is no. the one no, downside no, no. of this deck. Is yeah. you, when it comes to the grind, you are low on interaction. Yeah, you are you're interacting to try to protect your win. That is why you are interacting most of the time. Or you're like man draining um, to tempo out a early something. Oh, in this deck, oh. mana drain is a ritual. Mana drain is not a counter spell in this deck. Yeah, <laughs> mana okay. drain is a ritual. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of sit um, there and, and you just wait and see the the biggest CMC someone casts, and it's like a four and a five. You just you just rip it basically. Yeah, if 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 you see your opponent cast a spell that will uh, advance your curve on mm-hmm. your turn, yeah, just fire it off. Like if you have a finale of devastation or an or an invasion in your hand, mm-hmm. and you see someone play a four mana spell, you can just get it up to six. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, Mister Crom, would you like to help out with our Girl Scout drive for cookies? No. Oh yeah. <laughs> and bring your Crom. <laughs> yeah. That's that's oh, what God. we're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, that would hurt, man. At. That would really hurt. Hey, hey, Tivit. Uh, I don't know if you oh, know this, no. but you can help endangered species. <laughs> yeah, you it's can like help me hard cut the whole breaker horror. <laughs> you can help me. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is really like just a zoo, man. Like, there's there's Cyclops, Homunculus. We got a Goblin Pirates, Shapeshifter Rebels, <laughs> Halflings, like. Kraken horrors, elder dinosaurs, <laughs> dragon wizards. Like what I counted, I counted three humans in the deck. <laughs> those are, Is there those anything are those you don't have? Um, I don't know, man. I think I pretty much got it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, well clearly he doesn't have a he doesn't have a dozen. That's true. I don't. Oh, have a dozen's a human, I, right? We got we got imperial yeah. recruiter repping repping the all humans. He, yeah. he needs someone to keep record, keep track of what this stuff is. <laughs> Monkey oh, Pirate, really? man, there's just, it's, it's really just a zoo. It's like <laughs> Borber Zumos. <laughs> this deck is getting so many good names right now. <laughs> yeah, God. Okay, so instance, I think we are good on like the rest seems fairly standard you got your standard counter spell sweep veil makes sense cord makes sense as an instant speed whatever you want it to be uh, and i've got some counter spells noxious survival okay the rocks also we don't need to spend too much time on they're fairly standard right like you have your chrome Ox, your lotus uh crypt um and then we talked about birthing pod and the one ring already um, I mean, the one ring definitely makes sense in this deck as you're just trying to like get out your value engines quickly. So you really don't mind like tapping out for a one ring early because uh, you're going to be drawing like what? If you're waiting two or three turns, you're going to be drawing four off or sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be drawing one, then two, then three. You're going to be drawing five off of it when you need when by the time you're going off. Yeah, the the one thing that I uh, need to put in that we just completely forgot about when building uh, mm-hmm. is a Manamo. We forgot about Manamo. <laughs> that uh, needs to be in here. 
What do I see? Well, like, I, know, I see the reflecting pool. Should probably get rid of that. Yeah, it's probably. It, I believe that was the change we said was uh, reflecting pool for um, Manamo. Manamo. Um, right. Seedborn was why tried and it just didn't do enough. Like I was thinking that if too, you yeah. have, if you have the one ring, it does a lot. But if you don't have the one ring, does nothing. Pretty much nothing. not Almost. doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Okay. All right. So enchantments, we have carpet of flowers. No, nothing really needs to be said there. It's a ramp. Remora, no introduction needed. Uh, wild growth. Uh, let's stop there for a second. Um, why wild growth over, say, um, uh, mana dork? And I know like there's like we're in bowmaster meta, um, but usually people still play some dorks, right? Yeah, that was that was kind of uh, the consideration was just one toughness creatures just okay. die <laughs> like yeah I, the creatures die incidentally right now <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah so just having having that piece of ramp that just can stick around and just always be there after turn one just feels mm -hmm. much more useful um especially since like green pips it may not look like green pips are what you need but green pips are what you need <laughs> Okay. Um, Would you consider you ever think about metamorphosis? Metamorphosis. Manamorphos? No, metamorphosis. What is that? It's like it's an instant speed food chain card. Oh, oh, right. Yes. Um, I hadn't considered it because I kind of forgot about it existing. But now that you've reminded me of it, do uh, it's 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 a one time use food chain. Basically, I can't remember how much it is. is. It one mana. It's literally one green mana. Yeah, it's one green mana for a one-time use food chain. Um, huh. I don't know if you really want to run that. I'm not sure though, but you can only use it on creatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turns one creature into a uh, mana of any color plus one. Plus one. Okay, so it gives you plus one mana. Eh. So if I have a six drop in my, well, it has to be a specific six drop. Like if I have a dead eye navigator or a consecrated sphinx, then I can turn my commander into it. It can also just put out a couple creatures. But out considering, you can put out, out a whole breaker whore. Whole breaker whore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'd rather probably Not have the wild growth. <laughs> wild, okay. wild growth just seems more like generically useful i guess yeah like you can play this turn uh, one yeah okay it can help right. you get out your early rock and whatnot yeah exactly exactly it's just it's good at all stages of the game whereas that other card might only be good when you're going for a win and it doesn't help you before that okay yeah what yeah talk to us about survival of the fittest is, is there anything weird about this um we might want to know, or is it really just you're paying basically three mana to creature tutor? Uh, you're pretty much just using it to creature tutor for stuff that like sometimes you want in your hand. It's honestly its primary use is getting drift of phantasms into your hand. Mm -hmm. um, but it can also just be used to make um, Imperial it your early into... game creatures into late game creatures. Yeah, ah, once you're into yes. the late game, like you just don't need some stuff anymore. There's a point where playing an Orcish Lumberjack isn't really that good. So <laughs> Ragavan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ragavan is another. I, I think that yeah, that was actually really well put, Samurai. Like it yeah, it just recycles your the things you don't need into the things you do need. It's it's less about I mean it can also just grow grab you your combo engines, but uh it's, it's, or your combo pieces, yeah. but it seems like Another really good use of this is to just go grab a value piece when you need it. It's it's part of the deck's whole thing of modality. Like you just want yeah. to be able to swap to a new plan, and Survival of the Fittest just does that really well. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if a Dryad Arbor would have made a good placement in this deck. Ooh. Interesting. Dryad mm. Arbor, but that runs into that same problem with the. Uh, Bowmaster meta. <laughs> it does, but there's some more utility into it. It's it's pitchable with survival and reclaimable with uh, life, true. and then yeah, it's also abusable with Borba Rigmos. 
It's one of those oh, things yeah. where it's like most decks probably would be in, it would be like why this isn't get rock but in this deck it's like what this is sort of get rock <laughs> this, is, this is a different kind of get wrong <laughs> this is a get rock <laughs> get rock get, get rock <laughs> all right so food chain um yeah not much to be said here gives you infinite creature man up squee and um Barbaric is a food chain outlet because you can pay two mana and uh, instead of putting it on your library, you're putting it to zone and then you're recasting it and then when it ETBs, you draw a card and repeat yep. inf infinity times. Um, and then Rustic, of course. Uh, the land suite looks very standard. You have, of course, the channel lands with Seiju and Ottawara, uh, City of Traders to try to ramp out your big boys very quickly. Yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy in the lands. Yelp and Maya, of course, very good. Got a Triome. Yeah, oh, I, that's right. You, we do have a Triome in there. Why is that there? Triggers Dredge, right? Yeah, it can trigger Dredge, and also it's just like a, a oh. turn one fetch isn't terrible with it. Like, if, if, right. you're, if, if you literally have nothing to do on turn one, just getting all your colors is fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Triggers Niv. <laughs> Trigger's name is it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I forgot about the cycling ability on those. To be quite honest, but this actually is like yeah. a soft combo with uh, life from the loam, right? Because you like you, yeah, you can, can discard it, trigger yeah. it, put it back in your hand. Just... Huh. I, I'll tell you right now, this is actually a hard combo with life from the loam uh, because if there <laughs> is like a Dranith out and you have life from the loam. You mm -hmm. can keep pitching this to keep getting life from the loan if you have a dockside loop. So you can keep digging for your Beseju or for your Ottawara to get rid of this uh -huh. piece that's stopping you from getting Barbarigmos. So this is like yeah. an infinite outlet too. That's actually wild. I'm going to be completely honest. Didn't even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> even... Thank you for pointing it out. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> wow. We're going to be playing in a tournament. You're going to be like, now Samurai. Don't be mad. <laughs> do not be mad do, at me. <laughs> I'm going to do that thing you suggested. Oh. <laughs> that's that's actually wild as hell. Oh, my God. You can that's even incredible. noxious. Oh, I mean, I actually don't even need, like, anything, really. Like, you just need a draw to start this whole thing, and, and you need Ketra to not be on your battlefield. Yeah. But he has even if it sack it, so... Yeah, even if it is on the battlefield, you have Sylvan Safekeeper, Orcish Lumberjack that can just yeah back it for you. Besage you. You can besage you. Yeah. You you can no, besage you. Opponent. No, it's opponent. It's opponent. Oh, besage is. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Besage just opponent. Oh, um, yeah, but there's ways. There's ways. There's ways. There's yeah. chain of vapor. Chain of vapor is non land. Yeah, non land. Yeah, but you I, sack I it land. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Got, so you have like you three or tricks. A lot of different ways. I got ways. so many tricks. God. <laughs> well, is there any other way? Can we find one? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, not from what I've seen. Yeah, no, I don't, no, 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 I don't see one. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway. All right. Yeah, I think that's going to kind of wrap up the deck tech. Um. Do you have anything you else you'd like to say about the deck? And do you have any shout outs you'd like to give anybody? Any shops or friends or anything else? Uh, I think we've pretty much covered the deck. I would like to give a shout out to my buddies, uh, Sterling and Michael. Both of them helped me build this deck uh, a lot. Sterling is the one who is piloting it at the events. They, uh, he's the one who uses his ungodly luck to, <laughs> to have... <laughs> The craziest starts I've ever seen. Told someone I've seen more turn uh turn two Borbergmos and Fibblethip uh than turn two Kinnons because of that man. And Michael Michael helped me with the initial build, and uh they both have suggested a lot of very good cards that I would have never thought of. Honestly, I would have thought of half of these cards, so <laughs> He's, 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 whoever that is got a good good uh, head on those shoulders <laughs> okay so last very very last thing um, 
we have this thing called the spicy scale. Uh, and so this ranges all the way from a bell pepper, which has zero scoble units, all the way up to a Carolina Reaper, which is, uh, what is that, like 2.2 million scoble units. And in between that, we've got uh, we got Jamaican Bell, which is like 5,000. We got the Jalapeno, just a regular Jalapeno, which is like 3,500. Uh, habanero chocolate which is four hundred twenty-five thousand. anyway so we got a few options here so why don't we ask you where do you think this lands on a scale of from zero to 2.2 million <laughs> zero to 2.2 .2 million <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> glad, glad we've got a small range here <laughs> yeah yeah very scientific uh, this is a very serious question and very objective backed by science while while the deck may be running a bunch of very uh like staple esque cards, mm -hmm. I think it is running such a high density of them that it has to be at least over a million. At <laughs> least over like, a million, nice. So way past I, over nine thousand. Okay, over uh, nine. So, that we're way over nine thousand. I think this is a okay crazy. So, deck. The only candidate that I see that's over. Well, there's two. The only candidates I see over a million are. The boot Jalokia and red, which is actually an I'm pretty sure is an Indian it's an Indian pepper. So I got I gotta represent a little bit there. <laughs> and then there's the Carolina Reaper, which is two point two million. All right. Um I would I would, I would not put it on Carolina Reaper. <laughs> no Carolina <laughs> Reaper. All right. What do you think, Samurai? It's not that spicy. Oh, that's spicy. I'll be honest, this is kinda like uh this is like a habanero. This is like this habanero. is like spicy, like but only because of the lens. Uh, the land concept makes this spicy. The creature, yeah. most of this deck is very much like typical. So it's like, yeah, you know what? If you're not used to it, it's gonna burn. <laughs> if you eat a lot of spice, you're like, this is still warm. Like, it's not, this is not mild. <laughs> this Honestly, is not a mild deck. <laughs> in my opinion, I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna agree with Aiden here. I'm gonna give it the boot to Loki, the one million Skull units, because like, it's true we do see a lot of these decks and these cards in different decks but the overall composition of the deck is like way way different than like even a lot of the other teamer decks i feel like like the emphasis on lands the play style of the deck itself is it just feels different it looks different than like a lot of other decks and uh, yeah i don't know you know what i i agree like this deck like looks like a lot of teamer decks at first and then you realize it's missing a lot of th that's just because this has a lot of other teamer decks in it and i don't mean yeah. like <laughs> decks that, that are teamer i mean like it runs a lot of is it win cons it runs yeah. a lot of gruel win cons it runs a lot of simic win cons like you know it feels like you just took three gills and we're like yeah i'm just gonna take yeah your commander your commander your commander <laughs> we'll take these cards <laughs> Yeah, and it's and, like and we'll also, just throw them in. While it's not a lot on the deck composition, I can confirm that there is no better feeling than having an extremely powerful deck, putting down your commander and people going, "Oh, that's cool!" Like, like as as they're like brushing it off, kinda. <laughs> yeah, and then you beat beat them to death with with uh, <laughs> with some combo. You, you know what? I I agree with you on that. Not no better feeling in the world. Yeah, we're all agreed. <laughs> okay. You have gotten you're the uh, second person in this podcast long and illustrious history to get a score that high. So uh Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very it's something to be very proud of. Also, you will have uh the off meta guest, the very special Discord role in the Discord for as long as you choose to be in the Discord. Uh it's something only uh four people ever have. So very cool. My honor to hold the title. <laughs> <laughs> I got anything else today, Samurai? Uh, I got one question. Uh, yeah. Do you buy monocles or do you buy a single pair of glasses for these guys and just break it in the middle? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I I think they both need it. So let's get the single pair of glasses and just single save pair of glasses. Money. <laughs> we don't pay retail. 
We do not we bury do Texas. Oh my god. No, my god. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of this deck? Don't pay retail. <laughs> Don't pay retail. <laughs> oh man all right. all right folks i think that is going to wrap it up thank you very much aiden for coming on and uh enlightening us to our our, our lord and saviors <laughs> plural <laughs> borbrigmas and fibbletip and showing off this absolutely wild cdh deck uh Crazy thank you it's my pleasure to spread their gospel <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for watching Remember to like and subscribe, maybe send this to a friend, and a huge thank you to our patrons, JR and Matt Tang.